Okay. Yeah, that's not true. I got it. Good. Uh, who? Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks. I'm trying to get yeah. again. No, Hicks. Bill Hicks. Hicks. H I C K S. Long time ago. Long time ago. No, he is unfortunately no, deceased. Died about ten years, ten years ago. ago. I don't think so. Okay, thank you. That, that's, uh, it's like it's been 30. I had this feeling, man, because you know there's a handful of people actually run everything. That's true. It's provable. It's not a fucking not a conspiracy nut. It's provable. <laughs> handful, very small elite running on these corporations, which include the mainstream media. I had this feeling who's ever elected president, like Clinton was, no matter what your promises you promise on the campaign trail, blah, blah, blah. When you win, you go into this smoky room with the 12 industrialist, capitalist scum fucks who got you in there, and you're in this smoky room, and this little uh, uh, film uh, screen comes down, and a big guy in a cigar roll the film. And it's a shot of the Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. <laughs> It looks suspiciously off uh, the grassy knoll. <laughs> and then the film, the screen goes up and the lights come up and they go to the new president. Any questions? Uh, just what my agenda is. First we bomb Baghdad. You got it. Can you read something? Bill Hicks, how do we get Bill Hicks? He's online, I think, on YouTube. Put up some CDs. With this, that was great. He's got a lot of stuff on the He's probably the only professional to get who included the Kennedy assignment. Who's the one who's quoted saying that the sex six floor museum got it exactly right because Oswald wasn't in the window. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a That's a pinch. And it was a. Uh, I mean, okay. You mean it was Nikki? Yeah. 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 Stand for yeah. He also said that uh, people used to complain to him. Well, Bill, the Kennedy assassination was a long time ago. Get over it. And he goes, fine. Well, then don't bring up Jesus. That was a long time ago too. <laughs> Get Pilot to release the files. <laughs> <laughs> Who was on the grassy gold dog that day? He said, that's terrible. I'll have to get more chickens, probably get a new rooster. Hire more foxes. <laughs> My other metaphor is a guy uh, is in the field, and he sees a guy sitting under a tree, and he's completely wrapped in duct tape, head to foot, and he's got a big stick. And every once in a while, he picks up the stick, and he whacks a bee's nest in the tree. And the bees come out, surround him, and buzz around. They start stinging him. He jumps up. He's whacking at him. He's putting on more duct tape. Finally, gets some spray and sprays at him. And uh, eventually they back off, they go back in the nest, he sits down, catches his breath, but after a while he picks the stick back up and whacks the bee's nest again, it starts over. So you come down during one of the interludes and you say, what's going on? He says, things were fine around here till these damn killer bees showed up, all they want to do is sting you. He said, I sit here in this hot duct tape all day long, and keep them out, and they always find a new hole and I'm having to get more duct tape. He said, uh, and I got this spray that's supposed to kill them, but it doesn't kill all of them, there seem to be more of them. And uh, you say, well, maybe it has something to do with that stick and hitting that thing up in the tree. He says, what's that got to do with it? That's how I get my honey. <laughs> <laughs> They're just metaphors. Randy, you get have enough. You were asking me about it. Got it. So will this work? We got to get lights, I guess. Um, Before you start in, or you have some something to say? Yeah, I was just gonna do this then. Say a little something. All right. 
Well, you, you're the real hardcore ones. <laughs> Saturday night, movie People night. Wore out by Wolf yeah. I know. <laughs> so it's a. Uh, Just the Russian part. It's funny. Um, um, I'm the one who asked the question about um, Bugliosi's book on on uh, Walt's front porch. Um, interviewed Walt, spoke with him at, at length, um, and he. Uh, oh, by the way, my name is Randy Benson. I'm uh, um, making a film called The Searchers. It's a documentary on the research community. Um, it's become much much bigger than I I'd originally thought. I've been. Let me see. Um, my very first, I shot the very first frame in uh, the summer of 2002 when I heard that John was uh, speaking at, doing his American University thing in June. And uh, I uh, heard that he was doing it and I got in my car and drove up the morning of, got to DC, got out of my car, walked up to John and said, Hey, I'm Randy Benson, and, and I'm thinking about this project. And he said, "Sure, come on." <laughs> and so that was uh, seven long years ago. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't been able to touch this project in well over a year. Um, in fact, I haven't been around many adults in well over a year. I, my my first child just turned one, so. Please for, forgive me for being so far behind, but <laughs> but it's you know you know how it is. If you're a parent, you know how it is. But um, but uh, but yeah. So it's I'm back to it. Baby's sleeping. Everyone's happy. Everything's good. So my goal is to have it done by the summer. Um, completely done. I am ninety. Have everything pretty much shot. Um, and now I'm logging footage, cutting sequences together, um, <coughs> digging through well over 100 hours of footage. Um, so very complete. Um, I feel like I'm, i am got tons of great stuff. The only thing left to shoot will be um, footage, just raw, f just footage that, that, I've, uh, that I'll need once I uh, really get editing. Um, Tangential stuff. Um, you tell them about the Dallas premiere. You know. Sorry. You tell them about what you want to do for a Dallas premiere. Well, I, ideally, the Dallas premiere will be at the Texas Theater. Um, and that that's the pre-premiere. <laughs> sorry. The pre-premiere. That's right. This is pre. Yeah. This is a, a trailer. <laughs> a little sneak, sneak peek, for you guys to uh, thank you for your patience. Film that you've taken yourself, or did you get any? Are you adding any old footage of people like Finn Jones and Harold Weisberg? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of my footage is uh, a lot of the stuff I need for my film. And this is another plea to you for help. Um, is uh, I need a lot of network footage because um, the part of the thesis of my of my film is that. The research community is doing and ha has done and is doing the job that the media should have been doing this whole time. If they if they had done their job, you guys would be out of a job. You'd be working at the ice cream store. We are out of a job. My my point is is that if the fourth estate had been working as originally intended, um, and uh, and to be able to illustrate that I have to use network footage. I have to be able to illustrate NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I teach at the Center for Documentary Studies at Duke University. And Duke University Law um, has worked with this center in fair use. Um, and their case study was the movie Outfoxed about Fox oh. News, um, Robert Greenwald, Greenwood, Greenwald's, Greenwald. sorry. Um, great film. The issue though is that to illustrate how fucked up Fox News is, excuse me, 
um, uh, you have to use Fox News footage. But Fox News, in, in any other world, you would have to get authorization from Fox News to use that footage. But in fair use, you don't. So since, I'm, since a lot of my film is critical of the, of the major corporate American media, um, if I can get the footage, I can use it. Um, but to actually get the footage from NBC, for instance, um, it's three hundred dollars a second. Um, a second. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I, I took it out of your drawer. I was wondering when you in the bathroom for so long. Yeah. Um, CBS wanted to charge me a thousand dollars to use Hume's interview in the '67 CBS special, just to put it on YouTube. They wanted to charge me a thousand dollars for, I think, a three-year deal to to have it on YouTube. So yeah, they had their they got their sure fingers clenched around that footage, and they wanted to oh yeah. Up it. yeah. And bro, if you need my footage. Sorry? Well, why does Dave Von Payne get so much of it? He did. Free? He's just he's just like a lot of people. He just put it up on YouTube. He got a DVD of it. He just put it on YouTube. But he didn't. He never asked for permission. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Is that how Michael Moore gets his footage? Uh, he has to pay CBS three hundred dollars a second or something. Yeah, but his, you know, his films make a lot of money and. And his I yeah, so he pays straight out. But in small independents, yeah. don't get to do that. The um, somebody mentioned Ken Jones, and I have a, a picture I took of uh, Ken Jones uh, shaking hands with Senator Ralph Yarber on the uh, grassy knoll <laughs> that I have at the on the front page of a Yahoo group that I run. Dallas JFK research. Yeah. And, like, take a look at that. I will. I will. Uh, you know, I. Uh, you, you find you know these these clips that we pick up from fair use by fair use standards of just news that appears in the Dallas papers about mm -hmm. this case that um, we share to people who want to sign up for that. You know, there's no. Uh, uh, remuneration to me for it is just a, a, a hobby research exercise, right. uh, except for you know, I, I, I you know, never charge anybody for anything. I never pay anything. Right. A, and I've I've been behind uh, fair use as a political issue in the Democratic Party. We had a good discussion about that at the platform committee meeting of the national convention yeah. last time. Well, um, uh, for instance, there's a there's a clip of of uh, that John has talked about a number of times of Posner talking to Katie Katie Couric and um, she's fawning all over him. Oh, you must you've done tons and tons and tons of research. You must know everything there is to know about the case. And he was like, Yeah, I, uh, I, I was. I was. She said I, I was. She said I was immersed in the case for, for, over two years, and she was like, oh, "That's really amazing." And, and so, but I really that's uh, that's footage that, that I really really want to get. I want to be able to use that, and um, but of course, three hundred dollars a second. Mike Nurko though, taped it, and he he's digging through his attic for me, and and if I can just. If anyone taped that kind of stuff, I can use it. I can clean it up and I can use it. I don't have to pay NBC. Even though, okay, because my understanding of fair use was you could use it for educational purposes as long as you weren't making any money off of it. So I'm very careful on my website, even because I have all these screen grabs yeah. of Dale Myers animation and stuff like that, which prove him to be a liar. And I'm probably one of the few websites that's got that because he's actually got it in his images on his own website that you can't grab them. But I found, like, if you use a Mac with a certain well, program, you can get around it. Anyhow, and that really pissed him off because I was able to use his own research to prove him a liar. 
but I'm very careful not to have any banner ads or anything on my web page because I don't want to ever be accused of making money off his research. Right. Well, if it works in in your film, I mean, it, if you're again, like if you're making a film critical of Fox News, the only way you can possibly illustrate and make your point is by using their own footage. So you can and you can sell that to make money, and you're protected if you're if. But you have to be able to prove that that's the point you're trying to make. That's the only way you can do it. My entertainment lawyer is is pretty good, and okay. so. But I'm making sure my taxes are paid. <laughs> um, we had, uh, but the, we had a discussion group like this that was led by Jim Mars at the University of Texas at Arlington that I attended as long as it was still running and. Uh, and they met, met once a month, and here was this guy who showed up talking about writing a book. And uh, he wouldn't tell us a whole lot about it, but he was writing a book on the Kennedy assassination. We asked him what his name was, Gerald Posner. Yeah. Wow. Who? Posner. Posner. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, I know a guy who may have a tape of that meeting. <laughs> so. Any, anything, if... You know, when when stuff comes on, when interesting interview relating to JFK, if it's on, toss a tape or a DVD re to record it. You know, if I'm putting a general plea out, I'll, my email address is rbensonfilm at gmail.com. If you have any anything yeah. like that that you'd yeah. be willing to get credit for in a in an awesome documentary, that would be, I'd very much appreciate it. Um, two, two possible resources. Um, <coughs> C-SPAN has a has a huge uh, archive of almost everything, you know, certainly since like 1990 that's ever been on it, and they actually have a decent amount of JFK stuff. Okay. And, like you, you can get John on, on JFK, or, or John <laughs> talking about uh, the Kennedy assassination. You got on C-SPAN? Uh, on the C-SPAN <laughs> archives? When you were on C-SPAN, there was like a panel discussion with like Dan Mulday. Oh, the American and, Youth thing. Yes. Yeah, the Dan Mulday has taken his way uh, <laughs> and Okay, I'll, okay. Yeah. Uh, check it. It's probably like, I, I think it's like $30. Uh, Vince Palomar actually put it on, on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it's like, his recording of it is you know, just a camcorder in front of the right. television. Um, now I've uh, pitched this to uh, um, my film that 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 uh, I had a film that did did really well on the festival circuit, and um, it won it won the uh, Academy Award for Best Student Documentary um, a few years ago, and for a short film, a short documentary, a portrait of an animal control officer, a small rural North Carolina dog pound, it, uh, it turned a 600% profit, which is kind of unheard of for that format film. Um, and, and it showed at Cannes, it showed at um, International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam, sold to Germany, Poland, France, Spain, um, IFC, Bravo, bought the domestic rights. So I'm only saying this because as a, as, a, as a filmmaker, I, I, you, would, you would have thought I would show these distributors that I had some kind of proclivity for making something that would help their bottom line out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, and I said, you know, my, what are you making? I'm making a, I'm making a film uh, about the JFK assassination. Oh, and you know, fly to New York and meet people and and okay, what's what's your thesis? Well, you know, I'm um, really feel like the, the fourth estate has let the American people down, and it's a portrait of people who are really doing the job, <laughs> and no one wants to, you know, that was that was it with with. Uh, PBS and who at, who not long after that of course supported um, the Norman Mailer book Os Oswald's Ghost. Um, it's a third rail of politics. It it absolutely is. So um, that's why this is independently financed and and I'm confident that I'll be able to take it to the distributors in in Europe who who bought my other film and you know this the assassination 
and deep politics in general um, around the world and especially in Europe they're much more yeah. um, willing to face tough issues especially if it's American issues. Right. <laughs> 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 why, why do you think that is? Americans seem almost, you know, in the main kind of impenetrable to the truth. They, they seem to value their fairy tales so highly. Uh, you know, I, I've worked in the media 25 years and the average reporter, it's a wonder if they get out of their cubicle let alone doing digging. It, it's really gotten bad. Why is it so much open, more open-minded in Europe? Have you ever nailed why that is down? Uh, I can only speculate, and and uh, I mean, if it's an incredible, you know, if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, um, which I don't think we owe them necessarily, but but if you want to, you know, where it's look, it used to be. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm just in my early 40s, so if I talk like I know everything, I don't. But the, it used, the media used to be a public service, right? It was never expected to make a profit. But it somehow became part of the entertainment department at networks. And all of a sudden, it, the bottom line of news, of media, mattered. And so to give, just to give them the benefit of the doubt, their job is to make money. It's the truth. Nothing else matters. It, so we can get pissed off all we want, and believe me, I'm as pissed off as anyone. But look, that's the that's the system that that we live in now, and and I don't know if that if that can change. Alternative and independent media is great, but it's hard to. Thank God for the internet, net, ne net neutrality. But I don't know, that's my humble take on it. And I was going to ask Walt and John. And well, I think a large part of how you ask the why of it, the guy that built my house that I live in in D.C. was named Robert Lee. He was the commissioner of the FCC from the 1930s to the 1960s. In the 1930s, there was a massive public protest, and I mean massive nationwide, against the first corporation being allowed to buy the first radio band from the FCC. People did not want corporations to own the media and have access to it. And they don't own it like they own a mine or a piece of land. They merely monopolize the bands. And the bands are sold on certain conditions from what is still legally and otherwise by definition a commonwealth that belongs to all of us. The FCC has made regulations that allow the corporations and the money to mani manipulate it and monopolize it but the way to change it is to change the basis of those regulations uh, and take it back into public hands. When I was in Cynthia McKinney's office I was told by Georgia broadcasters who came up to lobby that in a few years everything was going to switch to digital TV. This was back in about 05. And I said, well, will you need a new TV? And they said, yes. I said, will you need a, a new box? They said, yes. And I said, will you need a new cable? They said, no, it'll come in off the same cable. And he said, in fact, there's people getting both of them on the same cable right now. And I said, well, fine. The people who want to see every nose hair on a football player should pay a fee to the corporations and give the corporations HDTV and take all the rest of the analog channels and give them back to us instead of using it as broadband for homeland security or whatever garbage they're doing with us and let us have some p actual public, not national propaganda radio and you know propaganda broadcast service, but actual public media where we could debate issues and look at things. But that's I think is more central and then once the corporations are there, you don't have a media anymore, you don't have reporting, you don't have anything like news, you've just got propaganda. Never had well I wouldn't say that that's, I mean I <laughs> I, th I, th I think the early, par early parts of mass media were a lot more democratic, but, uh, and certainly early newspapers were. But, you know, and Jefferson said, given a choice between a government without a newspaper or a newspaper without a government, he'd choose the latter because he understood that the flow of information was more central to democracy in the democratic process than was, uh, you know, the machinery by which the decisions would be carried out. 
But I, I said in that talk that you mentioned that, of course, he'd never read the New York Times or the Washington Post. <laughs> Jefferson retracted that in 1817. He's like, oh my God, nothing can now believe this. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it began to corrupt he, pretty fast. But exactly. <laughs> Did he really? He yeah. actually said that, yeah. 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 That's not until they start writing. God, that that's so yeah, depressing. Said, like, there, there should be three sections in the paper. One should be called, like, truth. And that section, oh no, I'm sorry, that's George Selma's. I'm mixing <laughs> quotes. But Jefferson did come out and say, wow, and, you know, because he's been president for a while. He's like, I can't believe how bad the media is. And, and now that's uh, happening yeah, to the internet. Yeah, yeah Selma said, tell uh, the truth and run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Selma was saying there should be three parts of a newspaper, you know, truth, lies, and other, you know, or something. It's like, of course, the part called truth would be very short. <laughs> right. Um, so I, uh, I did interview um, getting back to Walt, interviewed Walt, went, went to his place, uh, he said, uh, I, can, I can give you a couple hours and you know, that's getting equipment loaded in, set up, lights up, sit down, conduct the inter interview, get everything out. Got there at 10 a.m. And, and needless to say, we had dinner and beers. <laughs> so, he's, and, and, and uh, just like every Every, everyone I've interviewed, everyone I spoke with, Lisa and Jim, gracious to give me mountains of time. And, uh, you didn't get my bill yet. Didn't <laughs> have to. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Oh, um, by the way, I left a dimmer switch under your desk. <laughs> so if that light isn't really bright, it's you just have to turn that dial. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, there was some uh, a bag, a big heavy UPS bag, FedEx bag on Walt's front porch, and we're like right in the middle of everything, and so we're step carrying equipment in, stepping over it, and he said, "Yeah, that's Bugliosi's book," and <laughs> it had it had been there for, <laughs> for months. He didn't even touch it. It was like <laughs> well <laughs> over. I mean, he says it was on a table, but it was on the ground, and he he kicked it up under his. His little uh, so he really did use table. It, as a it wasn't even a doorstop. <laughs> the 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 FedEx guy put it on his porch and he never touched it. <laughs> and it was like covered in goo and dirt and yeah. leaves and stuff. Well, and Yossi told me it was that. I, I saw him at a, a meeting long after he talked to me. And the book was out. And the book had already gone to remainder, which didn't take too much time. Right. Yeah. And I saw no him and I said, "How's your book doing?" And he said, "You mean the doorstop?" <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, um, uh, tons of interviews. I've interviewed 13, 14, 15 um, researchers, and uh, um, but this is less than a two-hour movie. It's going to be a feature movie, so you see my problem. You can only use so much. Um, so a compendium series that that I'll put out, and I'll create a website and, and make all these available for for researchers. Um, will be the searchers, the interviews, and um, oh, and have the full interviews, um, even in some cases with my with my questions for uh, for posterity for the research archives. Um, so although if if interviews if I won't be able to use even half even a third. Of uh, of the interviews I've got, I collected, so it'll all be be available for uh, for everyone's use, if everyone's viewing. Start them up. I wondered if um, John Garrity could say what his project is because it's somewhat related. The Garrity Project. Um, the Garrity Project. Yeah. I'll just be really brief because uh, Randy's is a lot more impressive than mine. <laughs> but uh, basically, a few months ago, I proposed that. Uh, there be a collaborative project within the community. Um, I'm kind of doing the legwork of it, but the idea was that I try and get knowledge out of the research community, ask people to help me in any way they can, um, whether it be providing uh, footage, as, as Randy's been doing, Sorry. photographs, knowledge, uh, a place to stay if I'm going to interview somebody, a, a, a couch to sleep on. It's in its infancy at the moment, and I've kind of realized over the weekend that um, it's going to be a lot more of a long-term project than I'd first envisaged. Um, uh, I've barely been able to conduct an interview this weekend just because of the responsibilities with the, with the conference. But basically, 
I'm trying to make it on a shoestring, as, as Randy is. Um, I was kind of pitching it as a response, as a five-part response to the upcoming Bugliosi, um work with Tom Hanks that Jim was talking about earlier. Um, obviously, it's not going to be my research because I'm, I'm 24. I've barely done any. I've, I've done more reading than research. But uh, I was going to try and bring that knowledge together, give credit to those that have done the groundwork. Uh, I realize when I'm speaking now, it sounds an awful lot like what Randy has done. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm going to be kind of uh, not taking it from uh, a perspective of of looking at the researchers themselves, as Randy has done, but looking at the evidence. Um, the, the shape of the documentary, originally I proposed it for five parts, in no particular order, one to be about best evidence, another to be about Oswald, um, then another to be about the, the, the pretext, uh, the context, and um, what happened after the assassination, Vietnam, etc., and the escalation of, of, of globalization and um, the war policies of the United States and then finally uh, what I hoped would set it aside uh, from other documentaries would be the fifth part would be what the hell are we going to do after that and what, what avenues can we follow uh, being what Bill Kelly had suggested a grand jury investigation we're trying to get Watkins down here this weekend but where do we go from now like four parts saying this is what we know this is what we can prove <coughs> fifth part what are we going to do with this information so uh, I'll just leave it there. Um, I'll give it back to Randy. The information on the side of it. Yes, sorry, on politicalassassinations.com. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, you know, Jeff, yeah, uh, Jim. Can I just, uh, I don't know if you read my review of, of past year's documentary. I've, I've listened to a lot of your uh, no, shows on Black Ops, but yeah. I, it's on his website too, right? You went to it on your website, right? When I reviewed your documentary. I think I did. I think I did. Yeah, okay. Okay. Pat got. One of the things I liked about his documentary, and one of the things I didn't like about Shane O'Sullivan's documentary, is that Shane O'Sullivan's documentary looked like it was done by Emil D'Antonio in 1968. <laughs> okay? And I understand that film techniques back then were very difficult and very expensive. Mm. It's not like that anymore. Pat got a lot of slick directorial skill into that documentary for not very much money. Okay? You know, so. If you want to talk, I, I would advise you. What was the guy's name who directed it? Uh, uh, Brad, Brad Mendelson. Yeah, 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 I saw the DVD. He's, yeah, he's a guy I knew from you know since I was a kid. But then we re-met like at a high school reunion, and it turned out he'd been, I'd been in the music industry, and he'd been making, pre been producing um, some award-winning rap videos, including by Outkast and people like that. So he learned how to do the slick stuff on a computer, and you know make these two photos merge together and stuff yeah. like that. And I said. I would love to make a Kennedy assassination video with you. You want to try it? And he's like, sure. And so the first one was just kind of an experiment to see if we did any good. But anyway, I, I think you could find professionals like that who would just kind of be willing to work yeah. on the cheaper or, or, you know, to, to add those qualities because um, people who see my DVD, that's what they love in common. It's like, wow, you know, some of those images are really striking when you merge them together or you compare yeah. and contrast. Because sometimes people see, well, it's the thing I do with my slides. They see two photos and they don't really connect the two together. But then when you size them properly and you show how they fit together, then people all of a sudden, they, it hits them like, oh, okay. Hmm. Anyhow. Well, I have had a response from the proposal that I originally put out by, or from people involved with, uh, you know, editors and people that work in television and movies who have, you know, expertise in these areas offering to help me out as well. So, or at least draw upon their experience and, I told them I'd definitely be taking them up on their offer because um, it, it'll be a learning curve for me as well. I'm fairly technologically proficient, but um, that'll only go so far without any help. But yeah, thanks, Jim. All right. I've seen a number of people that have been working on projects about the assassination over the years. I've contributed some research to Jim Barr's book, Crossfire, and we have a photograph that's been published in there. Um, I, I, I see people put in a lot of hours of work and effort and expense and travel expense and everything about uh, uh, the case. And I wonder how all this works out as a, uh, I mean, do they break even? Do they make money? Is there some, you know, for all the work that's, that goes into this, is there Capital some... Capital is owned, Janet. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to see some examples of how yeah. this all works out. For yeah. Well, for all the work they do. I'm at an advantage because I don't really care for money generally. So right. that aspect of it, I don't really care. And I should mention that. The whole basis of the documentary is that uh, I won't be making it for a certain audience. It's supposed to be a web-based series um, available for free for all to see and try to make DVDs of it and spread it as far as possible, but while retaining some kind of you know, credibility. Whenever there's a commentary on Bugliosi's documentary, you'll say, if you want to see the other side, you can have your link. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you might get I, I can hits or something add, else. I'd definitely add some to that because in documentaries in general, um, I mean, I'm, I, I teach documentaries at um, the recently ranked number one ranked documentary um, institution in the country, at Center for Doc Studies at Duke. Yeah, independent film magazine. So that was pretty cool. So at Duke. Well. There are two documentary filmmakers in the world, in the world, who make a living making documentaries. Mm -hmm. Michael Moore and Ken Burns. Uh, he has a, a commercial production company. Same with Albert Maisel. Same with Frederick Wiseman. I mean, so you don't make monies in documentary film. I mean, I make. I'm, I produce a TV station in Cary, North Carolina. I have a um, freelance film, so I shoot commercials and music videos and industrials, and that's how I and teach, and that's how I make my my money. Traveling here into those other projects. Yeah, okay. yeah, and and you get get creative. So when I rent a piece of equipment for a for a gig. I make sure I pad the budget a little so I can use that one piece of equipment on something for this. Or, you know, you just got to get creative. But so documentary films, not just assassination films, but they're a labor of love. It's, I tell my students, if you don't have to do this, do something else. Because it's. There it's is some foundation money available. I, I know Bill Kelly was paid to go across country and work on an article by Fund for Investigative Journalism out of D.C. And um, there's some progressive uh, foundations that will fund uh, film making. But mm, this would not, this would not have happened if people didn't, didn't freely give their time. John hasn't charged, hasn't charged me a penny. Jim and Lisa gave, freely gave their time, and, and they didn't have to do that. You didn't know me from Adam. <laughs> yeah. I paid. No. I'll, I'll tell you guys. It'll be in a new updated version of his book. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's it really is like that. No one has. They've been like, hey, I. What about Gerald Posner? Oh yeah, you make money not telling the truth. You yeah. Right. Well, and that's that's part that's part of my part of my film. I mean, these dis could start these off discoveries. To say that the Warren Commission is correct, and then have a conversion like they always do. Yeah, there you go. And at the end, put out the thing saying, "I was I was so I convinced was they were correct, but when I looked at the facts, <laughs> you, you know, about when I was about halfway through this, he said that to me, and I was like, well, damn, <laughs> I should have started this way, <laughs> but uh." But yeah, and you know, uh, went to Last Hurrah Bookstore and had a great conversation with, with Andy. And, uh, and you're, what, uh, over 2,000 different books on the assassination that he carries. And um, think about all the, the press those books have gotten as opposed to Posner and Bugliosi, the two books. Think about the press. No, very few of the other books have even been reviewed in the New York Times. And these two, it's what? It's ridiculous. So, um, so Randy, are you it's kind of where we are. section about the media? <coughs> yes. Sure. That's the focus of the film. That's part Sorry, of it, yeah. Time for you to interview? yeah. Absolutely. 
Okay. A guy named Jerry Pollock. Oh, oh, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, that, right? Who lives, who lives in Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. And he can tell you, because he talked to John Leonard, who was the editor, the book review editor at the New York Times, that every Kennedy book never got to his desk, that it was always a sign before it ever got to his desk to somebody else, so he couldn't give it to anybody who would be fair minded. Right? Right. Yeah, right. often to Priscilla. Yeah. Oh, can I add something to that? I talked to Sylvia yeah. Marr. She wrote accessories after the fact, one of the groundbreaking books. And she said she'd written, now this book was published by Bob Merrill, Bob Merrill, um, credit to Bob Merrill. Oh, and she's established it, you know, and she wrote a hundred letters to the New York Times. She told me not one of them was printed. Wow. <laughs> you also might want to talk to Mark Lane. Yeah, I've interviewed Mark. Oh, okay. Because he did he speak about how the scavengers received after writing Russian yeah, Judgment was got like number one for six months or whatever. His follow-up book to it was uh you know the sca uh, not the scavengers it was um what was the name of it I scavengers and critics presumed guilt that was the one that attacked him. What was yeah. Lane's book? Russian Russia no, Judgment. Yeah. No, Citizens Dissent. Citizens Dissent. Yeah. Right. And he received like two reviews mm -hmm. in the entire country for his follow-up book to a number one site of Mesa. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a, media, a deliberate blackout. It's shocking. And the media need the Posner book because the Posner book means that they, they didn't have a job to do. I mean, the, the, if, there was, if there was no conspiracy, the media didn't do anything wrong by not reporting on it. Sure, so yeah, that's what they like. Sure they well, let the them Posner off book was clearly a reaction to JFK. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and we know, if you want to put that in there, Randy, you can get it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Because Jim Mars talked to Posner after the debate with him here in Dallas. And he asked him, he said, how did you ever come to write this book? Because I never heard of you. Okay, you know, he spent two of his pain wrapped years of his life. <laughs> okay, so he said, well, Bob Loomis called me. Okay, and, and he said, would you like to do a book on the JFK assassination? And he said, well, look, the only way I'll do a book like that is if you can get me access to this, you know, to all the people of the CIA, you know, and he goes, okay, that's no problem. <laughs> okay, so, and so that is how that book got started. And Jim Morris can tell you that story, because he told me that story. And Bob you Loomis know? used to be married to Jim Angleton's secretary. Yeah, Bob Loomis just happened to be married to James Angleton's secretary <laughs> okay, for 14 years. It's right? and you, you can't you, make this stuff up. You can't, here's it's a, crazy. Here's a capper. Yeah. I called his office one afternoon. I think it was like the middle of the week. Bob Loomis, you got Yeah, I called his office in the middle of the week in the afternoon. I says, Mr. Loomis, there. okay, and he says, no, he's not here. I go, do you know when he'll be back? Well, every other week he goes down to Washington. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he won't be back till next Monday, okay? So that's how plugged in this guy is. Wow. Right? So if you ever wondered how this guy got on the cover of U.S. News and World Report, just call Bob Loomis and he'll tell you who we knew at U.S. News and World Report that got Bob Loomis was that behind man. that Scavengers book, Scavengers and Critics of the Modern Report. Yeah. He, he was yeah. the editor of that book as well. Right. If you yeah. never want to work again, let me yeah. and Lisa talk about Loomis for about yeah, an hour. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> I've already resigned myself to bad reviews. PBS so. that came out of the CIA and founded PBS. No, because I bet they're related. Wait, who? Yeah, what? Who? I think it's a Henry Loomis, but he came out of the CIA and went directly into PBS. Yeah, ben, jo ben Jones talked about. It. But um, well, you know, it's a. Uh, of course, they try to control the media and everything else. And then the timing of the release of Posner's book was also aimed at the JFK Records Act, because if you remember the day that they formed the review board to start looking into the files and the act passed and they said like, oh, the files are open and the case is closed. Right. That was yeah. the and I said, no, the, no the, the, ca the case is open and the files are still closed. You know, so. I heard Posner, by the way, talk about how uh, James Phelan had mentored him. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's on the CIA website as an author. The left hates us as much as the establishment. No, but it's... it's <laughs> well, it's you know, the New Republic was actually set up by the right wing as a way to guide the left in a certain direction. That's mm -hmm. in uh, Carol Quigley's book. Yeah. You know, and you can't say that they would let the nation go with its own people within guidance right. in a certain way. Yeah. Well, Hamilton Fish, and they were ties even back right. to the Nazis, I mean... Well, Mark Lane, the nation. the nation would not publish is December 16th, 19th. Wasn't that the very first polemic against, yeah, December 16th, 1963. 
he submitted that thing, that defense of Oswald, to the nation. And they wouldn't publish it. Yeah. He begged them. What was the editor's name? I can't remember his name. But he begged them to publish it, and he wouldn't. He goes, what do you want me to do, burn it? He goes, no, Jeremy publish Williams. it. Publish it in some communist rank, which is what happened. <laughs> okay, which is what Was that Operation Was that Kerry McWilliams? No, 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 no. It, no, but I'm saying that's where the CIA controls the movie, Operation Mockingbird, that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, it yeah, might be a continuation of that. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, yeah, just a Kerry McWilliams, Dan. Bill Paley, and that was the guy's name. Yeah, that was his one. Yeah. And Bill Paley and the whole. So what do you got to show us? Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's see some so right now I just um, have a four, four, five, five minute clip from four interviews. Got it out. Um, and and unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have my two esteemed guests here. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't, 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 I yeah, I do, and Posner, um, they were so good, I didn't want to cut your interviews, they were so good, they have to be shown, complete, um, yeah, so, so, uh, just 20, 20 minutes, a year from now we'll we'll be sitting here on the 22nd and we will have screened at the Texas theater and Dogs and cats will be sleeping with each other, and <laughs> the world will be exploding. You got your limo ready for the movie? Your limo to the Texas theater. Yeah, star in the movie. I'm a red carpet. Sorry. Are you planning to introduce Lord Gallinor? Um, I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. What? I mean, they're. Yeah, I want to keep keep collecting keep collecting. You know, he wrote one of the best books. Hey, uh, take care, Jim. Okay, Thanks. see you, Randy. Randy, yeah. you're right. okay, Jim. I will be. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'll talk to you more in the summer. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, are you familiar with cover-up? Yeah, of course. Great. Actually, he's not so much concerned with who killed Kenny. He's been covered enough. So that makes it, it gives him. It's um, yeah. It's well, how I'm going to get in touch with him. Um, I have his card. I'm sorry, Tom. I've um, yeah, so, any, any questions? Um, I smell pizza. What, what you just saw is uh, really, <laughs> not pizza, but so you flavor of you're just gonna edit, yeah. no. Sorry? You're just going to edit and fix the sound and stuff like that. You're, no more filming? No, I, what filming I have will be, okay. we'll just be B-roll. We'll be, uh, no, this just shows, uh, oh. stuff to, connection. if I can't visually illustrate points that they're, yeah. That are being covered in interviews, then right. they don't have to collect it. But, but now, uh, oh, this is not <laughs> I can ask you a question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's well over a hundred hours of footage, so it's it's a good a good bit. Good bit of it. She was going to have a, a final product probably be a couple of hours, maybe. Yeah, it'll be a feature. And then how do you anticipate? So well, um, my my first stop will be with the uh, distributors who bought my last film in Europe, and the first festivals I'm gonna gonna take it to, and um, markets will be in will be in Europe. Um, start there, and then um, um, and then the finished film I'll take to IFC and Bravo. And People who bought my last from here. <laughs>